Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's event, the School of Planning's Admitted Student Webinar. My name is Christina Pope, and I will be your host. Before we begin, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. This webinar will begin with a 20 minute presentation followed by a question and answer period. We received quite a few pre-submitted questions which cover a range of topics, some of which include finding housing, the internship and course selection. If you would like to ask a question today, simply use the chat function to send a message. The chat function is set up that only the event hosts can view these messages. We will try to answer these during the webinar, but if an in-depth answer is needed or we run out of time, it will be answered later via email. Please know that we capture all questions. All event attendees will have their video and audio off for the duration of the webinar. For the best viewing experience, we recommend using a wired internet connection and closing any programs or browser sessions running in the background that could cause issues. Webinars are bandwidth intensive, so closing any unnecessary browser tabs will help you conserve your bandwidth. This webinar is being recorded and the recording will be distributed approximately 24 hours after the event ends. As you can see from our first slide here, this webinar has several contributors. Dr. Joe Kwan is the Associate Director of Graduate Studies in the School of Planning and will be leading the presentation. We're also joined by Tracy Bairness, the Graduate Program Administrator in the School of Planning and Sarup Sandhu, a current MES planning student. They will be contributing their knowledge and lived experience to the question and answer period. Um, with that, Dr. Kwan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Christina. Um, and uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, and uh, I think the purpose of today's uh, webinar is to uh, give you some initial sense about um, graduate studies in school planning and uh, some of the important things you need to start thinking about uh, in the upcoming weeks and also in your first term in the school of planning. All right, so um, planning is a multidisciplinary field. And uh, during your study in school planning, you have the opportunity to um, uh, you know, learn different aspects of uh, urban planning, urban and regional planning, uh, social side, economic side, and the physical side of urban planning. Um, okay. So um, as you can see from this slide, uh, planning covers uh, multiple fields, as I mentioned, the multidisciplinary multidisciplinary uh, area for study. And uh, during your study in school planning, you have the opportunity to learn about you know, planning strategies, planning implementation, and uh, planning assessment from different aspects. And you can see that uh, you know, planning here covers a wide range of uh, issues uh, for both human and uh, natural habitats. So this session we will have some introductions of our graduate programs uh, at both masters and PhD levels. And uh, we'll look at um, the structure of our programs. And also in addition to the academic side, we'll also look at you know, how do you achieve work-life balance uh, during your stay in school planning and uh, Waterloo region. There are a couple of important persons, you know, important doesn't mean that we're important in school planning, you know, important only means, you know, you're likely to get in touch with, uh, with us uh, during your stay in school planning. And uh, Tracy is um, one of your most important contacts uh, when you make progress to your studies, uh, because Tracy deals with uh, um, paperwork and procedures and uh, things like scholarship applications, TA arrangements uh, for graduate students in school planning. And uh, I work closely with Tracy to make uh, arrangement to, to, to do uh, scholarship assessments and so on. So um, if you have uh, any questions, or inquiries or concerns about your graduate studies uh, before you join us or during your stay, in school of planning, feel free to uh, approach us. And uh, of course, Marcus, Dr. Marcus Moose is the director of school of planning. And at the faculty level, we have Associate Dean 
uh, graduate studies, uh, Professor Simron Singh. So uh, at a certain point, I think you will um, either get in touch with us or hear words from us uh, about your graduate studies. Um, as I mentioned, Tracy plays a very important role um, uh, in your academic life uh, in school planning. So Tracy deals with things like forms, uh, program requirements, uh, uh, committee formation, you know, thesis committee formation uh, for both uh, masters, um, research students and the PhD students. Uh, she also prepared you know, your thesis defense. Um, we accept your general inquiries about uh, graduate studies and school planning. And uh, as we process uh, payroll, scholarship, TA assignment, and so on. So, um, your I think you know, for every one of you, I think you you know you can't miss Tracy because she plays such an important role uh, in your academic life during your stay in school of planning. Um, and uh, I think Tracy will be able to answer some of your questions during our Q and A session. Okay, so um, you are excited. You uh, accepted our offer, uh, and uh, certainly this is uh, you know the uh, very positive outcome of your motivations, and and uh, we hope that you know you can keep your motivations and uh, excitement um, after you join school of planning, uh, and uh, we know that you know for some of you. Uh, when you approach this stage, you know, you're, you're about to start your graduate studies, uh, I believe you have some concerns and worries. And I think um, the webinar today is to ease at least some of your concerns and worries uh, by giving you more information about the programs and uh, we'll certainly be happy to answer your questions. So overall, school planning has five uh, graduate programs, uh, MA and MES uh, are research um, programs, which means you either have to complete a master's thesis or master's research paper. Um, M plan and graduate diploma programs are coursework based programs. Okay, so you only require to complete courses. And of course, PhD planning is a um, research program at the doctoral level. So we have a very quick you know, snapshot of the program structures. Um, I'm not gonna read all of them, uh, but for all these master's program, you have to uh, complete uh, work experience or internship. Uh, you have to complete either a thesis or master's research paper. Um, and also there are two program milestones, which are um, professional development workshop and uh, your research plan. And these will be completed during your study of plan seven, uh, 710, okay? That's a required course. Um, and uh, the major difference between the thesis option and the research paper option is that, you know, certainly research paper is much shorter than the thesis. Um, but if you choose the research paper option, as you can see, you have to take two extra um, 600 level elective courses. Okay, so there's balance between the between the two in terms of uh, workload, and that's something you have to consider uh, when you make your choice. Uh, if you uh, put the thesis option in your application and you are accepted into the program, uh, you can certainly make switch uh, at a later time during your stay in the program. Okay, so that's 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 it's not something final uh, already. Okay. For M-Plan and graduate diploma programs, these are coursework based. Uh, for M-Plan, you have to complete the six um, required courses uh, plus four elective courses uh, from School of Planning, Master of Public Health uh, or Master of uh, Environment and Business. For graduate diploma program, uh, you only require to complete the four courses, which include one required course. Okay, so these are part-time um, programs uh, and uh, they, they mainly uh, are for middle career, middle career planning professionals okay? uh, who already have uh, you know, professional experience in the field of urban and regional planning.
Um, I think. Okay, good. Um, for PhD program, so you can see uh, there are a list of required courses, uh, and uh, and certainly you have to complete a you know a at least a one additional planning elective, uh, and uh, of course the doctoral thesis, uh, and uh, I think in the in the second year in the early stage of second year, you're expected to complete a PhD comprehensive examination, which includes a written part and also an oral part. Okay, so this is a you know, very important milestone for um, the uh, PhD uh, program. Okay. Okay, um, and so at this stage, we strongly encourage you to start think about, you know, um, the structure for a thesis committee and uh, have a close look at uh, degree requirements uh, in school planning and uh, how would you arrange your uh, courses term by term. So um, you, you know, you're urban planner, but at the same time, you're also an academic planner uh, for your own graduate study here. So I strongly encourage you to start think about these things uh, as early as possible. Um, internship is uh, a, you know, a required milestone for master's research program students. Um, and uh, if you have prior planning professional experience uh, for a certain period of time, you can ask for internship waiver. Um, and uh, usually students conduct their internship in uh, the spring of their first year okay? uh, or the third term uh, of their first year, okay? the springtime. Um, and uh, we'll, school will provide uh, help uh, by create a network of employers and provide your, info, your information of potential jobs. Uh, and you'll be able to um, have access to job, imp, you know, or employment opportunity information on Learn. Learn is a um, online platform uh, for graduate students. You know, you take courses, you have to log on to Learn. And, uh, you know, there's a lots of announcement about different kinds of academic events and, uh, um, employment opportunity, and they are announced on Learn as well. Um, there are also opportunities for you to consider, you know, whether you would like to join uh, professional um, organizations, for instance, OPPI, Ontario Professional Planners Institute, you know, they, um, they offer student memberships and other benefits to students. They also have scholarship programs available for graduate students. At the national level, you have Canadian Institute of Planners. You know, they have a, a magazine called uh, Plan Canada. They also have scholarship programs uh, and they also offer student membership. So if you want to, you know, um, join those uh, organizations, you have your options and you have your choice at both the provincial level and uh, the national level. Um, okay, so uh, as you can see, we have lots of uh, research areas and uh, faculty members have uh, a very diverse research interest. Uh, once you arrive there, arrive here um, and uh, research graduate students uh, will be assigned to a shared uh, office uh, by research clusters, so you you know you have the opportunities to uh, to talk with students in the same research cluster um, and uh, share um, you know your own experience with other students and learn experience from upper year students. Okay? Uh, so that's how you know you also have the opportunity to to uh, interact uh, with students from geography, students from um, other units under the faculty environment. And uh, it's it's uh, it's a good way, you know, for you guys to 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 interact 
uh, with other students at both the master's level and the doctoral level. Okay, so um, so that's something uh, we encourage students to to get in touch with uh, with their peer. As you can see. Um, faculty members here. So here you can see the, uh, you know, several lists of uh, um, faculty member names. Uh, and uh, obviously they have uh, their own research interests. Um, uh, I strongly encourage, you know, once you arrive here, um, you can take their courses based on your research interests. Um, and for doctoral students, eventually you have to form your, um, you know, comprehensive uh, exam committee, right? And then when you arrive the stage of uh, uh, thesis preparation, you have your you have to have your own uh, thesis committee, and that should involve multiple uh, faculty members. So um, I strongly encourage you to think about who uh, would be uh, idea ideal uh, committee members uh, for your doctoral thesis and also for your um, master's thesis. Okay, so. Um, interact with them, take their courses, have a chat with them during their office hours uh, to, to get to know um, many of them, right? Uh, and uh, you, can, you, know, you can approach them based on these research areas. Research integrity, I think it's very important. Um, and, uh, you know, we stress, uh, uh, for graduate study, we stress uh, um, innovative ideas, use, you know, we stress your own ideas, the, the significance of your research ideas, um, and the university has policies um, about, you know, research integrity and about what, what are the consequences of violations to research integrity. Okay, so get yourself familiar with these things, especially when you, um, you know, complete your assignments and term papers uh, and thesis and uh, PhD comprehensive exams, I think uh, you, you need to pay close attention to uh, research in integrity. If you have questions and uncertainties, feel free to ask your supervisors. And also, you know, you, you're welcome to ask um, myself as well. Um, and uh, at a certain point, I think most of you guys will visit this uh, research ethics office website because uh, uh, many of us will conduct research that involve surveys or interviews and then we have to submit our application to the office of research ethics uh, and uh, once they approve our application and then we can go to um, conduct our surveys and uh, interviews so i think most of us because it's a you know these are um, some of the research methods that are commonly used by graduate students. So that's why I said at a certain point, you will um, get in touch with uh, Office of Research Ethics. Um, administrative matters, you have to deal with them. Um, and uh, Tracy will be the first contacting point for these things, you know, um, and uh, uh, get yourself familiar with uh, university policies. Uh, and uh, you certainly expected to, to complete forms and sign off and submit these forms to Tracy for processing. Um, now, even you already have a TA ship uh, or IA ship, you can still uh, you know, explore opportunity to extra scholarship and funding opportunities. And, uh, um, at university levels, um, they actually organize scholarship webinars to um, tell students, you know, how to apply for um, flagship scholarships such as uh, SHRC, Social Science and Humanity um, uh, Research Council Doctoral Scholarship and Master Scholarship, and also Ontario Graduate Scholarships for for both doctoral and uh, master students. And uh, once you receive the scholarship, it's extra money for you, right? Um, so we encourage you, you know, if you feel like you're competitive, you, you know, we encourage you to participate in those uh, scholarship webinars. They're gonna talk about the uh, tips and the strategies 
for preparing these uh, uh, scholarship applications. So um, I volunteer to some of the uh, workshops before the pandemic, and uh, we had one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, guidance um, for some of the students who, who, who participate in those workshops. I, I personally, I found them quite helpful for students' uh, scholarship preparation. So I strongly encourage you to pay attention to to the upcoming scholarship webinars. I think they usually organize these webinars in, in, the, in the fall term, okay? So pay attention to these opportunities. Um, okay, so we talked a lot about, uh, uh, about the program structure and the uh, and, uh, uh, academic side of, uh, uh, of graduate study in school planning. Um, and uh, there are, you know, other uh, less intense events, uh, for instance, guest lectures and social events. Um, and the AGP here means Association of Graduate Planners. It's a student organization or student association uh, of our graduate students. And uh, they organize uh, social events for our graduate students. Um, and uh, they have their representative, they have their president, they uh, speak on, speak for the interest of uh, uh, the graduate student body in school planning. Okay, so this is a student, very important student organization. Um, and uh, they have representative uh, participate in, regularly participate in our school meeting as well. Okay, so uh, for the first term, uh, there are a couple of things I think very important. Uh, you should do is certainly you know get you, you know um, get to know your supervisor, get to know uh, Tracy, get to know myself, right, and also talk with your up year students to learn some experience from these people. Um, and I strongly encourage you to to participate in um, the social events organized by Association of Graduate Planners um, to have a sense of community, right and uh, enjoy campus life. And uh, you can't miss uh, the you know, Canadian geese. They're, they're everywhere on campus. Uh, and also squirrels, as you can see from uh, this picture. Um, at a certain point, you probably feel some, you know, um, feel a bit of uncomfortable, but I, you know, like this quotation says, it's, it's quite normal um, because for many of you, graduate study is something very new and it's very common to feel uncomfortable. Um, at times, right? Um, and uh, for next step at the grad, at the university level, uh, there's a, a program called Grad Ready, uh, and I put the link here. Uh, and uh, you probably will receive, you know, more information from Christina in the following weeks about uh, Grad Ready. Okay, and. Uh, uh, and uh, we have orientations uh, in the first couple of weeks for graduate students, uh, both at uh, the faculty level and uh, the school uh, level. Okay, so I think in late September, uh, school planning will organize the induction ceremony. It's a very important ceremony. Uh, you know, a, 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 a indication of the beginning of your professional career in the field of planning. And, uh, and uh, 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 you know, lots of uh, um, um, faculty members and also parents uh, would enjoy, would join the uh, induction ceremony. And, and I, I think that you, you know, at a certain point you will receive more information from our coordinator, event coordinator for the event that actually occurred in late September every year for planning students, uh, both graduate students and uh, undergraduate students. Um, now, a few very practical things that you have to consider. Uh, one is housing. So you have on-campus and off-campus choice, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, Along the journey, you probably have house issues and there are places that you can go uh, both on campus and off campus. Uh, for international students, um, writing might be a concern uh, and I strongly encourage you to uh, participate in the 
writing programs uh, offered by Writing and Communication Center because uh, improvement of writing, uh, if you're not a uh, English speaking um, person, uh, it's, it's a long-term effort. It's not like you, you, know, you, 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 you take a course for one time and all in a sudden you improve your writing skills significantly. It's a long-term investment. So we encourage you to get in touch with Writing and Communication Center as early as possible. And accessibility services provide professional guidance uh, if you have uh, you know, mental health concerns. So that's the point you should uh, approach. Uh, in the future, if uh, teaching uh, or a faculty position is, uh, is, you, you know, is, is, is uh, part of your plan, uh, and you probably can you know, uh, get a certificate uh, of university teaching from, from Center for Teaching Excellence. They have programs for uh, training of uh, university teaching. Um, on the non-academic side, there are lots of things you can do. I know that Waterloo is medium sized today. It's not Toronto, but still we have quite a lot of things. We have uh, quite a lot of local attractions. We have uh, uh, heritage buildings, heritage sites. We have a uh, uh, festival, for instance, October Fest uh, and uh, Reap Festival. Okay? And uh, we have farmer's market in St. Jacobs, uh, which is small, uh, a historic town in the northern part of uh, city of Waterloo. Okay, uh, we have a small collection of museums, galleries in Waterloo and Kitchener. Right? So, um, try to get some work and uh, and uh, study balance during your stay in school of planning. Okay. and uh, I'm very confident. You know, a, every one of you will be able to finish graduate school. Uh, calmly and successfully. And this is the picture that in, in my mind, in two or four years, you know, uh, and the faces will be, be yours, right? Uh, that's the difference. Okay. Um, and uh, it's quite important, you know, for your, for your health to achieve a reasonable work-life balance. Okay, so uh, that's something you have to develop your own strategy to, to achieve that, okay? All right, so that's uh, a very short and, and at the same time comprehensive coverage of you know, important things you have to deal with uh, before you arrive city of, you know, city of Waterloo, before you start your studying school planning. Um, I hope that they are helpful. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any question, I think uh, uh, Christina is, uh, is uh, facilitating the Q&A session. So uh, I turn it over to you, Christina. Thank you very much, everyone. Hello, Dr. Kwan. Thank you so much for that presentation. And yes, we're just going to jump right into the question and answer period since we have a high number of pre-submitted questions. Um, first, actually, Joey, a question right back to you. Um, how can we prepare for our research and writing our thesis leading up to our program start this fall? Now, I know you included a lot of this information on your presentation already, but is there anything, anything that really sticks in your brain about um, how they can prepare even, you know, before the program starts? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I sometimes approach by my own uh, graduate student before they join the program as well. Um, I think the first contacting point is your supervisor, um, because um, um, you know your supervisor is an expertise in in your field, and uh, you know if you ask the question uh, to your supervisor, your supervisor would be happy to to provide some initial guidance. You know by providing a reading list, you know recommended books, um, and then you know once you finish reading these uh, articles and books, you know you can. Uh, gradually develop your initial research ideas, and then you can present your, you know, in an informal way by email or by 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 chat um, to your supervisor, and you can you know keep the dialogue going uh, to 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 uh, develop your research ideas. Um, and also, uh, we have a couple of. Uh, research, you know, re required courses that you have to take in your first term, 
uh, which will help you to develop your uh, research method skills and, and they will help you to develop your research plan as well. Um, so yes, you can start um, thinking about your research idea even before you um, arrive in, in, in Waterloo. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, we have a couple of questions for Tracy now. Um, Tracy, when does course enrollment start and how do um, they enroll? So course enrollment typically starts about a month before the term starts. In the fall term, it is usually in around the 1st of August to about the 4th of August, and it runs right into September. So, you know, if you decide late that you, you want to get into a class, that's that's okay as well, as long as the instructor is okay with, with opening the class to um, further enrollment. But like I said, generally, generally about a month before the term starts. Um, and I will be sending out information on enrollment and when you can start and things like that. Um, and how to enroll, you will enroll through your Quest account. You, and you will be, it's almost like a shopping cart. So you can pick and choose your courses and um, at that time and you, you'll be able to decide which, which courses you'd like to see. Um, the course calendars are available as well. You can pull them up through Quest. You can pull up the, the course information that you're interested in. Excellent. And um, is there any way through that course descriptions um, that you can see which ones are offered online? Yes. If you look at the um, graduate schedule of classes, I'm actually I'm looking right now at um, at a link that I will be sending out and I, I can send it today actually to the students that um, that we have on the line. Um, there is a graduate schedule of classes and within that schedule it will show you whether it's online or in a lecture hall and where the location of the class will be all right i think i've included the appropriate link in the chat tracy hopefully yes, um, that is that is the correct one awesome um, and do you have any tips for planning courses for students specifically in the m plan program so the M plan program, you are required to take certain classes. Um, you have your obligatory classes, and then you also have um, electives that that can be taken. So I'm just I'm pulling that up right now, um, because I do believe you. There is a schedule. I'm sorry, I just had this. One moment, my screen's frozen. You know there what we, we can do, Tracy, if you want, um, I can go to the next question and then you could send the link to me and I can send it out to the group. You got it, it's okay, it, it just got stuck there for a second. So there are six required one-term plan courses um, that are obligatory courses. Um, so plan 65, plan 700, 702, 704, 705 and 706 are all required courses for planning. So it is suggested that you take those courses in the order that they are listed, um, partially because they are, some are introductory courses and the other courses won't make as much sense going forward if you don't have the introductory first. Um, there is also four online elective courses that can be taken from the School of Planning or approved electives from other departments. Now, if they're, if the um, electives are not on the list, um, you can reach out to um, Professor Khan and myself and it will, the approval will be provided. Excellent, Tracy. Thank you so much. Um, so I have a question now um, about the internships. Um, Joe, can you tell us a little bit more about the internships and does the university find um, positions for students? Do they provide some support or um, are they on their own? 
Yes, um, good question. For internships, um, or we also use the term interchangeably, use the term work experience. Uh, so basically, we expect students to complete uh, about 14 weeks, uh, four time, four time means about 35 hours per week um, employment uh, in the field of planning. Uh, so it's a professional employment in the field of planning. Um, and uh, it's basically uh, student, students have to find job uh, by themselves, but uh, we, um, what we do, what we always do is that we uh, will approach um, the departments and the private uh, consulting firms, um, you know, uh, through our own network. Uh, and uh, you know, just remind them, you know, spring is coming, spring term is coming, that we have graduate students available for internship opportunities. Do you have such kind of opportunity for our students? Um, so we spread words among our networks uh, in the professional field. Um, and also we, as I mentioned in, you know, when I um, went over one of the slides in my presentation that we advertise uh, available opportunities and positions uh, on Learn, which is an online platform for graduate students. So you, uh, you, know, you have the chance to see the employment opportunities for internship. Um, so, but you know, it's, it's upon our graduate students themselves to eventually find and secure this uh, these internship opportunities, but we do what we do is uh, we you know we promote our graduate students uh, in uh, professional market and remind our um, um, you know potential employers in 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 our own networks. Excellent, thank you, and. Um... Sarup, have you completed a, a internship yet, or do you um, want to speak to any experience if you know of any of your colleagues who have? Um, yeah, so I am currently in the process where I'm approaching my summer internship. Um, I have secured an internship, and uh, previously the the upper years, the second years, I guess I'm I'm a first year student, um, have been very helpful and. Uh, sharing resources, especially the AGP. Um, members of the AGP will be very open about job resources and like sharing and promoting um, any potential jobs. I think for me, I would say the, the best advice that I probably got was to reach out to your supervisor. Um, your supervisors are professional planners for the most part, um, and they, uh, or have had work experience and they have a lot of connections and they can um, A, help you find a job that maybe relates to your interest and your research interest, or B, help you find something that maybe is completely different, but something that just will give you that planning experience foot in the door. Also, I did want to mention that there is a, almost like a um, course that you're added to, it's called the internship. Um, it just shows up as a course on your in your course selection and it's um, they oh, on there the the staff like the faculty and like as well as professors will like post opportunities for employment so um, I would say majority of my cohort is employed um, and then a lot of other people either have that exemption because they have previous work or are doing some type of other work such as like RA ships or in you know some type of unpaid internship um, it is quite flexible and it's I, I didn't find the process particularly too difficult, um, but it's overall been an okay process. Um, and I, I think it's been pretty successful. I haven't really heard of anybody really struggling. Um, and although we don't, I know the, the school doesn't technically um, provide or like a, a robust, I guess, um, job opportunity, like, uh, I guess, board or anything like that. There, uh, this center of career action at the school um, does upload planning jobs just on their regular job board every day. So I check that and I just check in with my supervisor and I was able to find like a position, like no problem. So they do prep you. And like I said, the AGP holds uh, many seminars and many uh, workshops on resume writing and job interviews and just connection uh, kind of networking stuff anyway. So it is a is genuinely an okay process. I know it can be daunting, but I was I was successful and majority of my colleagues are successful or are on the path to success, I guess. 
Awesome. Thank you very much for that answer. I know that was definitely um, a question that we got a lot pre-submitted for the attendees. Um, Joe, I have a question for you. I will be attending the program from British Columbia. This student is an M plan, incoming M plan student. Um, wanted to know if the lectures and tests are real time or asynchronous. Um, I think uh, they are in asynchronous. So uh, you, you know, you'll be able to watch um, recorded lectures, and and these are you know the courses that we. Uh, we prepared, you know, all these online courses uh, are prepared by faculty members um, uh, who work with uh, the Center of Extended Learning. So that, you know, these are our, you know, um, professional um, department in, in University of Waterloo who, who has expertise in online learning. So we prepare these uh, um, video audio recordings and uh, they're available on uh, on the website, you know, you, if you enroll in that course, you have access to these courses online. Um, and uh, I don't think there are any uh, real-time tests that you have to complete. I, I know that in most cases you are expected to have uh, um, discussions. You know, you 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 join the discussion board and uh, and the uh, you know leave your comments there enjoying online discussions uh, but they don't have to be online because you know like you're from british columbia and we also probably have students from calgary uh, from ontario uh, so um, it's uh, we understand it's you know sometimes it's very challenging to organize something or arrange something especially for tests or assignments you know you have to 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 everyone has to show up uh, at the same time so don't don't worry about that Excellent. Um, and then one more question for you, Joe. Um, for the, um, the master's planning program, uh, the research-based program, do we pick our classes? I, actually, I'm not entirely sure which, which master's um, it is. Do we pick our classes or do we take all the same classes? Um, I think uh, there are um, two parts. Uh, I assume that you're talking about uh, the research master program. Right. First, you know, I need to. Yeah, it's um plan M, plan M. Plan M. Um, yeah, like I think I think that's the MA program. MA program. Okay, excellent. Um, if it's not the you know whoever asked the question, please ask it again. I'd be happy to talk about the online program as well. But for MA or MES, MES planning programs, um, I think the first thing. Uh, there are two parts. So the list of required courses that you have to complete. Um, and uh, if you visit our website uh, for ME and uh, MES, there are a sequence of uh, a term by term sequence and there are recommended courses that uh, you're supposed to complete, especially required courses. So I strongly encourage you to follow the, those uh, sequence, term by term sequences. Uh, for the required courses, uh, because if you miss one and you have to, you know, go back in your second year, right, uh, which is not convenient situation for, for most of you guys. Um, so that's the required course part. And also you have the elective course part. Um, and that's, um, you know, these courses are chosen uh, after your discussion with your supervisors, you know, what are the most uh, su suitable elective courses. Uh, for your research, and uh, you know they can be determined by discussions between you and your supervisor. Um, and uh, so, for that part, there's you know more flexibilities, and uh, you probably have more choices. Um, depends on your research interests. Yeah. So there are two parts: the required courses and the elective courses. And one thing I think you should, you know, you should keep in mind that. Uh, uh, you also want to check to see um, when the elective courses of your choice uh, are available. Okay, um, and uh, sometimes, for for example, sometimes these courses are available in the fall term. That doesn't mean this the same courses will be available in the fall term uh, in the future. Okay, because of the scheduling of courses and the arrangement of. Uh, the, the, you know, the teaching load among colleagues. So there might be some changes. Um, 
But I think, you know, I strongly encourage you to look at the term by term sequence uh, on our website for MA and MES programs, and you will get some sense and also uh, give you some basic information for you to make arrangement for the next couple of terms for both your required courses and elective courses. Excellent. Thank you, Joe. And I think I've included the appropriate link on the on the chat. Um, you just have to scroll down a little bit um, near the bottom of the page. It has the recommended program sequence. Um, so our next questions are about um, housing. So um, Sarup, you told me uh, earlier that you have lived off campus. Um, how did you find off campus housing, um, both securing housing and, and what's your experience been? Yeah, um, so I've primarily lived off campus. Um, I've never really lived in a graduate uh, residence. Um, the way I find my housing is there is an off campus housing website that the University of Waterloo offers. Essentially, you can go in, you just, I, you can literally type in off campus housing, U Waterloo, University of Waterloo. Um, and that site is where there will be, um, I guess, landlords that will kind of post their housing options there. Um, in particular, I like using that site just because the uh, the housing options there are a little bit more trusted. Um, those individual landlords um, or I guess company landlords. Uh, yes, um, Christine just put it in the, the chat. Uh, a, a little bit more trusted. Um, the university does, they have a housing, a housing uh, unit corporation, I guess, that just try to check these um, units and these landlords so they're not, you know, shady individuals that like are just trying to scam you and that sometimes does happen, um, unfortunately. So I love using that site. I've always found all my housing on that particular site. The only thing I will say the downside of that website is that it's predominantly student housing. So if you're not looking for student housing, I would say maybe that's not the option, but there are many other trusted websites um, in the Waterloo, uh, particularly the most active are the Facebook groups. Um, landlords have created Facebook groups that you can join and just view housing, do tours. Um, so when you kind of get here, it's a little bit easier to navigate uh, and you can start looking on Facebook almost immediately. So those would be my tips for off-campus housing. Um, yeah, I, but I would say if you're looking for student housing, I trust this school website the most. I've had the most success on that website that was linked. So. That's my experience. Excellent, thank you very much. And there are a number of graduate housing options, um, both as uh, you know individuals, there is some family graduate housing as well, if you're coming in with your family. Um, and I actually just spoke with the um, housing department um, recently and they are hosting um, a Zoom event or a webinar event in a couple of weeks, um, addressing all of um, graduate housing questions. So I've just put the link for the event in the chat as well. And if you are looking for housing, um, this seems to be probably a, a good event for you to enroll in and, and learn a little bit about the application deadlines, the cost, and what you could expect from the resident's uh, experience. All right, Joe, uh, the next question is for you. What facilities, such as training, workshops, courses, et cetera, does the School of Planning offer to help graduate students move and work in industry-oriented jobs? Yeah, um, the facilities, you know, if you talk about hard facilities, you know, we have computer labs, design studios, and, uh, um, and you know, standard teaching classrooms and so on. Um, and, uh, but I think more importantly, in our MA and MES programs uh, uh, credited by PSD, you know, professional standard boards, which uh, um, oversees the, the quality of uh, um, professional planning pro programs across Canada. So these two programs are credited by uh, PSB. Um, and I think one of the slides that I present uh, mentioned that it's underneath, you know, the OPPI and uh, um, uh, the, uh, the Can Canadian Institute of Planners. And I think the, the, the item, the very bottom, I mentioned PSB as well. So um, this is a very important um, thing uh, that a planning program is accredited by PSB, uh, which give you a jump start once you join the uh, uh, professional 
um, planning organization, whether it's a public organization or private organization in the, in the job market. Um, uh, the accreditation of uh, uh, PSB means that you know, the, the professional training uh, in school planning, you know, professional training through MA and MES programs in school planning uh, are recognized uh, by the professional uh, nationwide professional planning training standards uh, that's specified by PSB. So that's a nationwide standards for professional planning training. So um, the courses that you will be able to finish and uh, the skills in the both soft skills and hard skills, you know, hard skills, I'm talking about GIS, for instance, remote sensing and uh, design skills, you know, and other computation skills that you learn from school planning. And also the, you know, planning theories and the, you know, social economic sides of planning uh, will be able to um, well prepare you for um, professional jobs uh, in both public sector and pr private sectors in, in the market. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, the next question is for Tracy. When would we be expected to arrive on campus? Classes begin the first week in September. So you would be expected to be on campus at that point. Um, to, be, to be quite honest, I mean, you could arrive on campus at any time, depending on housing. Um, on campus housing, as we've previously talked about, you can you can get that information of when when housing is available. However, as far as classes, like I said, it's the first week of September. Um, I've had students arrive a week before classes start. I've had students arrive the day before classes start. My personal suggestion is you need to be settled and get yourself into a situation where. Um, you're not, you know, kind of racing around trying to figure everything out in the city um, the first week of classes. And most certainly, um, I will also be sending out information probably about mid July, early July, um, just giving you some information about, you know, where everything stands and, you know, when the enroll a reminder of when the enrollment starts a reminder of you know when classes start and and things like that so and at any time please do feel free to reach out um like i said it, it's kind of a subjective when when can you arrive you, you could arrive at any time but classes do begin the first week in september Excellent, thank you. Um, Joe, we have a question here about um, TA duties. Approximately how many hours a week are we expected to uh, have TA duties? Usually um, TAs are expected to work 10 hours per week. Uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, one term means uh, how many weeks? Uh, 16 weeks. Okay, so 10 hours per week for 16 weeks. Um, although lectures typically last for 12 weeks and then because you know, some lectures have uh, final exams and final papers that are due after the lectures, uh, sometimes uh, quite a few weeks after the lectures. So TAS do expect it to mark these um, uh, assignments uh, a few weeks after the end of lectures. Uh, but, you know, usually we expect to spend, you know, on average students are expected to, to spend 10 hours per week for 16 weeks. That's, that's a TA, you know, TA workload for one term. Standard TA, you know, 1.0 standard TA workload for one term. Occasionally, uh, we assigned uh, half TA. Uh, for one term, so that means your workload is uh, the you know fifty percent of the workload that I just described. Excellent. Okay, um, we might have time for maybe one or two more questions. Um, Sarup, this question is asking about um, any advice that you might have about a student arriving from out of province. 
Um, yeah, so I had um, a quick talk with some of my out of province colleagues um, and they did mention that in the beginning they did attempt to kind of do school kind of in their home province, uh, but they found that the switch to moving to Waterloo a region was like much more effective for their education. So um, that's something to consider if, uh, if that you want to try it out, if you want to kind of stay remote for a bit and then move here, maybe your second term, that's definitely an option. And some people did do that. Um, I guess the advice I would have, and we did briefly talk about this uh, before the seminar started is that it's much more effective to just be near campus if possible, especially if you're doing a research based program um, with the School of Planning, it's you get a research space and you get to interact with your colleagues. Um, so I think that was the most beneficial thing that my colleagues noticed was that they just get to interact a lot more and bounce ideas off of their colleagues and also have a stronger relationship with their supervisor as well. Um, so if you are coming from out of province, like I think, uh, you know, I think it's worth trying out being here if, if you find that um, it's not your vibe. If you don't like Waterloo, then you can always, I guess, kind of try to be remote. And I will say that the professors here are very flexible. So that's fantastic. I They're very accommodating. They're very considerate. Um, and I do have uh, quite a few colleagues that still commute from not out of province, but just in the areas around uh, KW region. So uh, yeah, just, you know, get in contact with your supervisor and get in contact with the professors when classes do start and see what works best for you. But that would be my advice for like out of province students. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, we are um, coming up very quickly to one o'clock. Um, so I just wanted to let everyone know that for the people that have submitted their questions and they haven't had an answer yet, I have recorded your name, I have recorded your contact information. So we will be in touch with you um, if uh, because we we haven't had time to get to to all of the questions, but you will we will be in contact shortly. Um, but I just wanted to spend a little bit of time wrapping up the webinar before we end. Um, for our contributors to the webinar, Joe, Tracy, Sarup, do you have any um, last minute things you want to say to all of our attendees? Um, Joe, I'll let you go first. Well, uh, first of all, thank you, Christina, for um, organizing this, uh, you know, very helpful uh, information session. And uh, I believe that, you know, our students will feel the same. Um, and uh, I appreciate, you know, students, participants in, in this webinar. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in September uh, when we'll be able to meet in person in many of our events organize, organized by School of Planning. Thank you so much. Tracy, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, I would just like to welcome everyone to the program and we do hope to see you in September. My office door is always open. Um, well, <laughs> I say always open, but I'm in three days a week. <laughs> so, but my phone always rings and email is always answered. So um, you will be hearing from me quite a bit, probably over the summer. And, and like I said, I look forward to you joining us. And uh, Sarup, anything that you want to say to potentially um, your incoming classmates? Um, I'm I'm excited to meet you all. Um, it's really it is a really great time. Um, I did my undergraduate degree at the School of Planning as well, so it's been a, a lovely experience. Um, and I can't wait to hopefully meet you all. And I hope you all accept and uh, come join us here as studio students. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, the student body is um, it's a small body, but it's very um, very well connected and everybody is really well known and, you know, gets along really well and like um, a good community. I, I was really happy to see that. So um, my expectations were met. So I hope yours are too coming into the school. Excellent. Thank you very much. And with that, it is now one o'clock and our webinar is coming to an end. Um, I will be sending out a recording of this webinar um, about 24 hours from now, um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all in September. Congratulations on your offer and have a great day.